everyone, how's it going today? I am very thankful to be here and excited to bring you a new video. I know it's been a long time. I've honestly took a little break, got some things worked out in my home life and figured out what I want this channel to be going on in the future. Um, please forgive the side window lighting here because my ring light isn't plugged in because I noticed when I plugged it in, my plug-in started sizzling so that's not good i live in an old home i'm renting an older house and i don't want my house to burn down so i'm probably going to call the landlord and mention that because that's happened at least twice and i noticed that the plug-ins are now black so we're going to cut that out because i don't want to burn everything i own anyways <laughs> let's get into this video i'm excited to bring you what i read in the month of april 2021 let's do it So the first, like, I'm not going to go in order, okay? The first thing that I'm going to show you, I have this whole stack back here. As you can see, these are all of the manga that I read in April. I didn't read a single book, not fully at least. I've been reading two books, but they are very slow and steady right now because I'm just in a manga mood. I haven't been reading a ton of book books. I've got one that I need to review for someone, and then I've got one that I'm reading just for me. And uh, yeah, so it's been all manga this month. So I hope you're excited about that. So the first things I read this month were volumes two and three of Scrapped Princess. This is by Ichiro Sakaki and Go Yabuki, character planned by y Yuki Nobu Azumi. This is a three volume series and I read the first volume last month. I have a lot of nostalgia with because I did watch the anime a long time ago. And let me just tell you from reading the three volumes, it's not great. I rated both of these two stars each and I think I gave the first one three stars maybe. So I can't really recommend them unless you're just into the nostalgia of collecting them like I was. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep them or not. It's something I'm gonna have to think about long and hard because you know right now I'm not fighting for shelf space necessarily but I do need to buy like another bookshelf. But when I do get down to needing to get rid of series, this is probably going to be one of the first ones to go. But for now, I'm probably going to keep it, if I had to guess. It's supposed to be a story about a girl who is cursed. There is a prophecy from a great priest who says this queen is going to have twins, a boy and a girl, and the girl is going to bring about the destruction of the world if she turns 16. So they want her killed at birth. So uh, she, of course, doesn't get killed. She gets hidden away, and so she's a scrapped princess. And these two adoptive brother and sister, Raquel and Shannon, great sister brothers, I love them in the anime, they protect her. They have magic, and they have sword fighting skills and strength, and uh, they protect her through their journeys, and they're trying to get her the answer she's looking for while also making sure that she doesn't get killed. And she's kind of boisterous and loud, but she also has a very kind heart. So you feel, you know, sympathy for this girl and she doesn't even know why she's supposed to be the end of the world and it's just a big mystery. There's a lot of weird science fiction-y kind of things going on, especially in the anime. It's much more interesting in the anime and it's a lot more fleshed out. This is so, so fast. You can't really get into anything with three volumes when it comes to a fantasy series like this. I like the overall story of the concept and there is a lot of uh, sorrow and death in this series. So it's got merit to it. It's just not not great in the manga. The next thing I read in April is Sweat and Soap Volume 3. This is by Kintetsu Yamada. Okay, I gave this five stars first of all. Fantastic. I think I've given all of them five stars. This is the sweetest realistic like love story. Some smexy times thrown in. Uh, volume 3, which this is the only one so far that's rated M, so 18 plus. This one has a little bit more of a risque scene in it. But it has less of those scenes in it overall. Like the other ones have more scenes in them, if you get what I'm saying. This one has less of them, but the one that it does have in here is good stuff. Uh, not for kids. 
Do not get this for children. Do not buy this if you are underage. Very sweet though, and I love these two characters so much. I love watching their romance blossom, their uh, tension between them grows. I also really, really like the application of like a real relationship and the things that you might struggle with if you really care about each other, like a little bit of jealousy, some misunderstandings, but they are talked about and done in a realistic manner, not just kind of ignored for the sake of story. They deal with them on a mature and human-like level. Like, uh, we're gonna talk about this problem instead of letting it fester for months and months and then our relationship mess up, you know? So it's, it's just really refreshing to read something like this, especially as an adult, because you know, you're only given either shoujo or you're given like these really toxic relationships, especially in like real life uh, romance novels. I don't dig romance unless it's in manga typically because it's just not, it's not realistic to me and it's not even that fun to read about. So yeah, I recommend this if you are into that kind of thing because it is just so good and so refreshing and sweet and sexy. So yeah. I also read Blue Flag Volume 3 on my uh, tablet through the Shonen Jump app and I cannot get over the cliffhangers in this series. Like the, the end of this one was so good. I'm gonna have to read it. I wanna collect it, but we'll see if there's like ever a sale going on anywhere because I have already read it. Uh, it's so good. It's great for anyone who is in the LGBT LGBTQ plus spectrum. I love these characters so much. They're just so sweet and so innocent and, and trying their best to do what is good for their friends, for each other, but also trying to make themselves happy. So it's it's a struggle between wanting to be friends with people that you are also in love with. And I'm really, really scared and also interested to see how they handle these resolutions because eventually they're gonna come to a head and someone's gonna confess to someone how they feel probably. If not, it's just gonna be a lot of unspoken tension throughout the series, which is also fine, but I do kind of want it to wrap up. I don't know how long this is gonna be, um, but it's so good. Boys, girls, I think everyone will love this. I recommend it so far to all ages. I haven't noticed anything mature happening in here. Um, I think this could do great things for the youth and I think libraries should carry it. It's, it's really good. Gave it four stars. The next volume I read is volume one of Wave Listen to Me. This is by Hiroyuki Samura. Sorry if I butchered the name. This is a new series by the author. I've never read any of their other work, but they tend to write more action, um, gory stuff, but like brutal. I don't know. I've just heard that. This is more of a slice of life in the perspective of a DJ, a girl who is tricked into confessing some things and the dude records her and then he plays it live over the radio the next day and she hears it and she's mortified and she loses her job. Crazy how it gets to this point, but it's an interesting premise and I was very intrigued and my husband's a DJ for like three or four different radio stations locally. So we were both very interested in this. We picked up volumes one and two because that's all Barnes and Noble had when we went. And we just wanted to try it out. I like the art style. It's kind of got like a grainy, gritty looking style to it, which I love. I love a good sketchy look. I'm just super, super interested in this idea, but I gave this three stars and let me explain to you why. I'm hoping it picks up in the future, but I have no idea. I don't recommend reading the Goodreads reviews on this before you read it because it might muddy your idea of it, but I didn't do that. Not bad, but there are some problematic things within this and could be triggering to some people. And to each their own on that, you know, you have to try to figure out triggers for yourself sometimes because not everyone's going to list them for you. But I try to do that if I can, so I hope this helps. Uh, there is an outing of someone who is gay and uh, some people find that problematic and I totally understand. Also, the girl and the guy make a few homophobic remarks and it's very strange. That choice is very strange and I know that humans do that and it's not unreasonable to have characters that are flawed, but it is kind of weird that it was thrown in there that they just kind of make fun of these gay people or this gay person and then out him to each other and talk sh about him like that's just one little part of the manga like it doesn't have a point really it's just kind of thrown in there and it just felt strange to me like unnecessary content but maybe it's just character development that i haven't caught on to maybe they'll grow from that and learn or maybe they're just really bad people that we're reading about here which you know i can read about bad people i'm not i'm not too whatever for that i just don't think that everyone's gonna vibe with this 
I'm not sure if I vibe with it yet. I still need to read volume two to see for sure. I think after that I will make a decision if I'm going to continue supporting this. There's a lot of stuff in here that might not be great for everyone, but I honestly can't remember everything. So just tread with caution. It's not, it's not like a groundbreaking series so far. So I can't say that I would recommend it to anyone unless you're just super, super into this author's work. But yeah. The next big thing that I did was read all of Arissa. I went to do a reading vlog for y'all and I did kind of start one and I need to edit it, but I never actually got around to finishing talking about this. So I'm going to do that here and I apologize. There are 12 volumes. Um, this is something I started back in high school. I got volumes one through three and then I just stopped and recently I picked up the rest of them and reread it because I wanted to see what, what it was actually about. This is a story about... I'll just hold the first volume here and talk about it because it's so heavy. Uh, Arissa is a story about these two sisters, um, Subasa and Arissa. I think Subasa is the redheaded one. No. Subasa is the blonde and Arissa is the redhead here or brown hair. I'm not sure. They are twins and they get separated very young. One goes to live with the mom, one goes to live with the dad during a divorce and they kind of communicate through letters throughout their lives, but they don't really get to see each other that much. And I'm not quite sure why. That wasn't ever 100% told why they don't just meet up. But one day they decide they're gonna meet up and one of the sisters tries to kill herself. And the other sister decides she's going to disguise herself as the other sister and try to figure out why her sister would try to do this. She thinks maybe she's being bullied or there's something really bad going on in her life that she needs to figure out why and maybe it'll help and maybe it'll help the other sister wake up from her coma because you know she didn't actually die. She just went to sleep for a long time. You find out a lot of dark things are going on at the school. A lot of dark things are going on within uh, the sister's background and her life and her love life and it it's very triggering. <laughs> like I, I didn't have any issues but I can tell that someone who may have had issues with suicide and suicidal thoughts and suicide attempts may not want to read this because it is so full of suicidal thoughts suicidal attempts and suicidal like people wanting you to commit suicide like people egging you on to do it and that could be very bad for someone i'm very surprised that this is only rated 13 plus i would expect with the subject matter that it should be at least 16 i would say personally because you know 13 is a very vulnerable age for those kinds of thoughts and it's so full of them um there's not like blood and gore necessarily there's a little bit but not enough to like warrant a higher rating. But the just the subject matter is so dark. This is a dark shoujo for sure. I like the story. I think that it has some good things to it, but just be weary who you're buying this for or if you're collecting it, what it has, because I was reading this and I was just like shocked at how many people tried to kill themselves and how many people were like, yeah, you should just disappear. Yeah, you should just go away. Like it's just chock full of that. So just be very careful. I, you know, I want you guys to stay safe and take care of yourselves and those around you. The best we can and if you can handle those things i recommend it i think that it has some good things going on within it but it is very strange it's very strangely written and i don't know if it's a culture thing or a translation thing or if it's literally just how the story is done because there's a lot of decisions that the main character makes that just don't make sense at all even if you're a teenager I think that a lot of these situations could have been figured out without all of the destruction and drama that happened. It's very dramatic. There were characters that were obviously the villains. There are characters who were just mean for no reason and they never really got any payback for doing those things. People forgave each other so easily and became friends with their enemies and it's just strange to read about. But I like it. I think that it has potential and I'm going to keep it in my collection because I did enjoy the process and I think one day I might want to reread it again. So I do recommend if you can handle it. It's it's a good time. I think I gave most of those three to four stars. Yeah, three, four stars. I didn't give anything under three and I didn't give anything of five. The next thing I read was volume two, the final volume of the collector's edition of Mermaid Saga by Rumiko Takahashi. My favorite mangaka, officially, I have decided it's her. This is a originally three volume series that they have put into these editions and re-released for from Viz. They are beautiful. The art is fantastic, these little flaps here, and there's a little bit of colored pages within it. If you can afford these, I recommend getting them 
through like right stuff or somewhere that's on sale because they're like $25 each and that's 50 bucks for two books <laughs> I'm a little cheap for that so I got these on sale um I think that you should definitely read these even if it's your first Rumiko Takahashi please support this this series I wish that she would write more within it even if they're just like little one-shot volumes or something because this is the most fascinating story ever you're following these two characters or mostly this one character and he eventually gains a friend and she goes with him but he is unknowingly fed mermaid flesh and in this world if you eat the flesh of a mermaid you either turn into a monster and die or you become immortal and so even if you get killed over and over and over and over and over again you'll come back to life so there's only like one way to kill them i think i really can't remember what it was but anyways he is traveling throughout the ages you see uh the time periods go through he goes through all the different time periods and you see him going through every little bit of history and it's really cool to see that and then i think he eventually gets to like the 80s and 90s and that's kind of when it ends and I'm thinking that's when it was probably written so she didn't want to go into the future because she didn't know how that was going to look and I wish that she would keep going into what we're into today like he's still alive out there and he's still hunting how to get back to be a human you know like there was no resolution at the end of this him becoming human again because that's ultimately what he's trying to do is to not be immortal and to just be a human and uh I absolutely love it. It's so fun. It's a little gruesome because it is a horror and I I just cannot stop thinking about this series and, and wanting to reread it. I'm so glad I own these editions because I tried finding the originals and you can't hardly buy them for less than like $50 each. So I ain't about to spend $150 on three volumes of manga. But yeah, these are great please read them please support this author she's still putting out work and she's won so many awards for stuff like this five stars easily all right don't judge me too hard for this next thing i read <laughs> i already showed you the first volume when i read it both have been five stars fire in his fingertips this is by story and art by kawano tanishi this is an adult series adults adults 18 plus mature there's a parental advisory here right right here so listen don't do not do not do it if you are not 18. this is so smutty this is female hentai 100 percent. some people have problems with the levels of consent in this and i totally get it if you're not into that just don't worry with it i understand that culturally things are different and i like this kind of thing personally so it's up my alley i support it i want to continue to support it i think there's an anime too but i don't know where on earth you're gonna find it or watch it i've only seen little bitty clips that people have shown on like tiktok that aren't nsfw but this is the one that i love i heard about this through the uh thirsty thursday book club from shay geeks out and mom loves manga and that crew and uh now i'm addicted i have volumes one and two and it's a little hard to find right now because they're all sold out i guess they just have like a smaller printing number of these i hope that they get more because a lot of people are showing interest in this at least on tiktok i love it i want a million volumes of something from this author it's so good it's so smutty it's sexy it's a fun time and I can't recommend it enough if you're into that. It's about a girl who has this childhood friend and she's been getting him at mixers and trying to get him to hook up with someone because she knows he's kind of a player and she's trying to help him out. And uh, secretly they're both in love with each other. It's not really a spoiler, but smutty things start happening and maybe they start developing a relationship. It's for women mostly for sure. It's it's good stuff i want my husband to read it to tell me what he thinks personally i love it it's cute the art's great i do recommend if you're old enough the next book i read was a random experiment i try to every once in a while pick up something new that i've never really heard about or something that i don't know a lot about and people just say they like it and this is one of those it's a little expensive but i got it on right stuff this is delicious in dungeon volume one by ryoko kui kui I gave this five stars. This is so good, y'all. Like, it's $15 American, and I can't say that that's a cheap price, but get it on sale. It's worth it. My battery's dying. Oh, no! I gotta charge the battery. Sorry, guys. Be right back. Okay, before I was so rudely interrupted by my camera dying, um, I read Delicious in Dungeon Volume 1 by Ryoko Kui. This is a fantasy series printed by Yen Press, so they do run a little expensive. This one is $15, new at store cost. 
So I recommend getting it somewhere with a coupon or the right stuff or somewhere that does like discounts like that because this is very expensive for what it is. Um, that being said, it is very, very beautiful. The quality is fantastic per usual. There's some very fantastic creatures created within this world. We are traveling with these group of adventurers. It's kind of like a isekai-esque world and you're going into dungeons and they have to defeat these monsters and at some point they run out of food and money and so they have to start eating the monsters. So they start learning how to cook and it's just so cool. Like I love the foodie manga-ness of this. I love the monster creation. I love the characters. It's really cute and I want more people to read this. It's very cute. I want to continue it definitely. It took me a while to go through it because it is so um, text dense, but it's not unmanageable. Like normally that kind of stuff throws me off, but I love this. This is so good. Please, please check it out. I gave it five stars. The next thing I read was Ajin Volume 2. This is uh, by Gammon, Gammon Sakurai. This series is fantastic. I am excited to now start collecting the manga because I watched the anime a few years ago. It's so good. These are small volumes, so just be prepared for that if you buy them. They're not going to be, you know, this is kind of a bigger size. These are kind of the smaller size, so there is quite a difference there. We are continuing on with the story of our main character here, who finds out that he is a demi-human, or an Ajin, and uh, the world wants to capture him and do test subjects on him and kill him over and over again, because in this world, these creatures called demi-humans cannot die. They can die over and over and over and over and over again, but they always come back. And so the government just runs tests on them, and they're feared, and they're like, treated badly and he's just trying to escape and also find allies and figure out what he should be doing and what to do about this situation and it's just fantastic. I think that everyone should read this if you're into horror or like um, survival horror. It's, it's amazing. I gave this one five stars. And the last thing I read this month so far, I still have a few ongoing, is volume two of Living Room Matsunaga-san by Keiko Iwashita. This is so cute, y'all. And I know that age gaps are for everyone. This isn't necessarily a romance yet. It's just kind of forming a rapport and relationship with these characters, but you are led to believe that eventually they're going to be a couple. I don't remember what the ages are in this. I think it's either 16 or 17 and then he's in his 30s. So I understand if that's not for everyone, but it is fiction and I like the story. So I'm going to continue reading it up to this point until it makes me uncomfortable and it may not, who knows. But this story is about a girl who needs to move into a boarding house to go to her school and she's living with a bunch of people. Um, I think her uncle runs the boarding house or something and then a bunch of older people who like have jobs and everything and she's just staying there with them so that she can go to school. And she forms like friendships and relationships with these people and it's just so sweet and it's so fun to see her grow as a person and understand what it is to be an adult. And also Matsunaga-san is smoking hot and he's a graphic designer which I love because I'm also a graphic designer so I just identify with what he's going through and things that he has to work on and like the struggles of coming up with art in your head and he also collaborates with her on a few things so it's really cute and I like it. I think that it's handled well and uh, you know if it's your cup of tea I recommend. The art's fantastic and I'm really really enjoying it so far. I gave this five stars easily. Oh I lied I did read one more but I already sold it because it was not my cup of tea necessarily. Uh, I read Hitori Jime My Hero Volume 1. This is a BL. I kind of just picked it out along with um, Delicious in Dungeon just as a random don't know if I'll like this or not because I want to try some more BL. I just don't have any on my shelves really and it wasn't really that great. I don't think it's for me. For one this is a follow-up series to one that they haven't even published yet as far as I know or if they have published it I don't know what the original series is. So you're already supposed to kind of know who these characters are and that could just be on me for being misinformed. But it was a little confusing in the beginning. There wasn't a lot of exposition telling me what's happening or who these people are or what everyone's feeling. You're kind of just expected to understand it. And uh, I kind of got what was going on after like a couple chapters into it, but it was a power dynamic between a student, like 15 year old and his teacher. And I understand the taboo nature of that is appealing to some people and 
you know, kinks and things. And I'm not going to kink shame people. But it just wasn't for me. Like, I like age gaps to an extent. But this felt a little strange to me personally. So I just chose not to read it. This didn't feel as predatory as uh, this one did. And I don't have a problem with you if you read it. I do not judge you and I don't think that you're a bad person or whatever. I just, it's not for me personally, so I'm just not going to continue it. I like it. It's just not something that I'm super interested in. So I sold it, got rid of it already, and uh, got a pretty decent chunk for it. So I'm pretty happy about that. Anyways, that's all the things that I read this month. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Let me know what you read. I want to know what you guys are reading right now. Books, manga, comics, anything. Um, I'm doing laundry in the background. Sorry if that's annoying. But I have so many plans for this channel and I hope you guys are here for it. I'm very excited. My husband just got partnered on YouTube. He had a thousand subscribers plus. So he's about to, I think he's applied to become a partner and we're pretty sure he's going to hit it. But uh, yeah, go follow him. I'll put his channel in the description below. He does martial arts, karate, um, fitness, things like that. So if you're interested in that kind of content, go, go see him. He's a really nice guy and he works really, really hard on his content, especially the fight likes. Like they're very popular. So I hope you guys enjoy your day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.